Uh, we have the great honor tonight of, uh, of welcoming someone that I know you're all very, very familiar with, Victoria Beckham. Everybody. Victoria, welcome. It's such a pleasure to see you. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, so I'd like to start with um, asking you about your first fashion memory uh, when you were a little girl. Well, can I start by saying thank you so much to everybody who's here. I was not expecting so many people. <laughs> wow, this is incredible. Um, my first fashion memory would, um, would have been when I was a child. And um, my mum, in the 80s, had very big 80s hair and very big 80s shoulder pads. And my mum really enjoyed being a woman and really celebrated being a woman and loved to take pride in herself and the way she looked. Hair, makeup, clothes, shoes, accessories. And as a young kid, I used to just love sitting and watching her get ready. Um, and I used to love reading fashion magazines. I used to collect fashion magazines. Would you say that fashion was something that you really, really wanted? It's, uh, is there a pun in there? <laughs> it's what I really, really, really want. <laughs> there you go. As if. Yeah. Victoria, this is a seat of learning. We don't make puns. OK, we don't have jokes. We don't have fun. Um, it is what I always wanted to do. You know, fashion really is my passion. It's what I, what I love to do. It's what I have to do. Um, I love what I do. I don't consider what I do as my job. I always say, well, it's, it's almost like, you know, it almost feels like a hobby that has done really, really well. well because it, I love it, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people don't associate work with enjoying themselves and, and they don't associate work with being their passion, whereas I really do. Well, a few years ago, I remember that, um, someone saying that designers were the new rock stars. And as someone that's been both, which one's more fun? You know, for me, I'm very, um, I had a great time being in the Spice Girls. I really did. And I'm very respectful to the other girls and to all the fans that we had. But, but fashion was always my, my passion. And I'm, I'm living a dream. I really am. And I wake up every morning and I pinch myself. I'm very, very lucky. I feel very blessed. So I would say right now is definitely where I feel comfortable. I believe that I'm competing in an arena um, where actually I, I, I feel like I'm good. I feel like I'm good at this. I've got a long way to go. There's lots of things that I want to do. I was never going to be the best singer or the best dancer, and that was OK. I had four other people with me. You did quite well at it, though. I didn't do bad, but, you know, I, was, I kind of hid behind the others a little bit. But, you know, I really feel that I have something to give. I feel that I have a point of view, um, and I have, I have a lot to say. And, and it's great when you find something that, you're, that, that you think that you're OK at. So when you were going through the, the performing part of your career, yeah. what kind of exposure to fashion did you have beyond simply wearing dresses? I mean, hanging around with designers and, and learning about that life. Do you know, I remember when I was in the Spice Girls, I got invited by Donatella Versace to go to Milan and watch a fashion show. Um, and it was incredible. It was incredible. She took me to the store and she, um, she, she dressed me. And then I went to the show and watched a real fashion show. I'd never been to a fashion show. I'd seen pictures. I'd seen videos. But I'd never been to a show and, and felt that intensity and that energy. And actually, I saw Donatella not too long ago. I judged the Walmart competition in London with Donatella, Franca Susani, um, and Diane von Fostenberg. And it was quite funny because Donatella said to me, do you remember when you came to Italy when you were in the Spice Girls? And I said, yes. And in this wonderfully Italian, uh, ac wonderful Italian accent, she actually said to me, um, you altered the clothes. I fitted you in the clothes, and then you altered the clothes. <laughs> and we, we were laughing about it. But it was, it was such an experience, it really was, to feel that energy you know, I, I, I've never felt that anywhere else. So to go from that, from, to go from being at the height of one career into a completely yeah. different one. I mean, we're in a room now with, with 850 people who are learning to be fashion designers and other types of designers. How did you learn? You know, for me, a, a lot of people say, what is the best advice that you can, that you can give? 
And I think the best advice is to work for other people. And I didn't go to fashion college, but I spent quite a few years working for other designers. So I worked with Rock and Republic, designing denim. I worked with Linda Farrow, designing sunglasses. I worked for Samantha Tabitha, and that's um, a Japanese accessories company designing handbags and also jewelry. And I learned so much. And I think that's the best advice that you can give to anybody. Don't leave and try and start your own company. You know, get out there, work for other people, learn, be a sponge, have your eyes open, enjoy it, but learn because it's, it's hard and it's complicated and you have to surround yourselves with the right people. Um, I'm not doing this on my own. I have an incredible team of people that work really hard. Um, and... Uh, until you put yourself out there, you don't realize what it, what it takes. So I would say definitely get out there and, and learn from other people. Well, if you are looking for people who have been trained, I know there's probably 800 here that would like to talk to you. I'm always looking for people, always. So, so um, what do you wish you'd known a little bit more of? I mean, what have you picked up along the way that you think back now and you think, oh, if I'd known a bit of that then, that would have been very useful. I don't ever enter into another category, for example, until I can surround myself with the right people so that I can do that and, and, uh, and I can do it properly. So I don't really do anything until I, until I think I know how to, how, how to, how to do it right. So mm. it's hard to think of anything that I wish I'd known now. I mean, right at the beginning, I was very lucky. There are lots of designers who really supported me. One in particular would be Mark Jacobs, who's a very good friend of mine, and he was very sweet. And he offered me so much ad advice not about designing clothes, but about the business. Um, and I've never pretended to know everything, ever. I want to learn, and I want to surround myself with the right people so that I can learn. It's a very good point, because, of course, fashion, sadly, has a reputation for prima donnas. And yeah. I think anyone that's even tangentially involved knows that prima donnas don't really prosper. Everybody thinks I'm going to be a prima donna, so when I'm not, it's a pleasant surprise. I just, I don't think there's any room for that, to be honest with you. I, I, I really don't. And I think it's about being focused. It's about working hard, having a point of view, having a vision. Maybe some companies do have people that, that are a little tricky, and that's the way they work, and that works for them. But that definitely doesn't wash with what I with what I do. So um, having been in fashion now for a little while, what are some of the milestones that you feel like you're quite proud of that? I mean, launching different yeah. collections along the way or, or certain points, ports of coverage? I think that each season, you know, my collections grow and, in, uh, uh, and evolve, really. So each season, I feel very proud of what I've achieved with my team. Um, I'm about to open my first store in London this fall, so that will be another very exciting uh, exciting time. I launched e-commerce a year ago, which has been hugely successful and very exciting, and, and I've learned so much from that, so that has been yet another milestone, if you like. There's a couple of English people on stage. Uh, there are a great many British people in the fashion world here in New York, mm -hmm. uh, and we're about to commemorate 50 years of um, the first British invasion. Right. Um, I'm interested in um, what made you decide to launch your collection over here because you've been showing in New York for a little while mm -hmm. um, you know and the, the receptions one would get in different parts mm -hmm. of the world vary greatly so mm -hmm. what was it that, that made you want to come over here you know for me um, and I've just shown my tenth <coughs> season so I've been doing this for five years um, when I first showed my collection I was actually living in Los Angeles so it made sense though my studio was in London it made sense for me to show um, in New York, and plus, at the time, not all of the uh, the buyers, if you like, actually went to London Fashion Week. It was very different then to how it is now. You know, everybody comes to New York, everybody goes to Paris, and everybody goes to Milan, but not everybody did go to London. So it just made sense. A mixture of that and and me actually living in in LA it made sense. And I'm really glad that I did it that way. You know, I have um, a great little slot on a Sunday morning where I do my show. Everyone's and fresh in the morning. Me. Everybody's fresh in the morning. You know, when I first started five years ago, I wasn't doing a big show, um, the show that I'm doing now. I used to do little presentations. That was very smart, because that, mm. I think, I'm sure it was just because you wanted to do it that way, but yeah. it also betrayed a, a huge lack of ego. Mm -hmm. You know, I imagine with the attention that was focused on you, it would have been very easy to have a big splashy show and get everyone yeah. there at once. Yeah. 
but you didn't. You went for a very understated approach. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, I showed in a room at the Waldorf um, Hotel here in New York, where I spent about five days doing sometimes one-on-one -on -one presentations. Sometimes there were 10, 15 people in a room. Sometimes there was just one. And I had a couple of models. And there were 10 dresses in the first collection. And the girls would walk out in the dresses. And um, it all happened quite naturally. I would just start talking about the dresses just because I like to talk about, talk, talk a lot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I talked to journalists and also fashion buyers. And I did probably about 10 of those every day for about five days. Um, and then as the collections grew and, and as time went on, the presentations got bigger and bigger and the venues got better and better. And now, um, now it, it's a full-blown full show. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I'm interested in your, the way that you're described mm -hmm. in, in your own company literature as businesswoman first, even before yeah. designer. Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago, Sheryl Sandberg from uh, Facebook published a book about leaning in. I know, I've read it. I'm a big fan of hers. Yeah, and you managed to do this. I mean, you, mm -hmm. ba you manage your family, uh, being a wife and running this enormous business. Mm -hmm. What is it, do you think, that enables you to do that where, where other people struggle? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I work hard. I do consider that I have a good work ethic. And I work hard. I focus. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a prima donna, you know. I know that other celebrities, if you like, have launched clothing lines, um, and they've done it in a very different way to how I've done it. It was never about me, the celebrity. It was about the product. The product spoke for itself. Yes, people came into my presentations, and they had preconceptions, and that was fine, and I didn't go into this to prove anybody wrong. I wanted to prove um, to myself but that was it, not to prove to anybody else. And the bottom line is that the product really did speak for itself. It was good product, the quality was good, and people wanted to buy it. And that was the first piece of advice that Mark Jacobs ever gave me. He said, if you design a collection and it's really good, then people can say they don't like it, but no one can say it's rubbish. And that was really good advice. And you, we were talking earlier about um, how focused you were on one mm -hmm. particular type of product mm -hmm. when you started. So it feels like you've grown organically. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I started out for the first um, four collections, I think it was, just designing dresses and creating a signature, which would be a straight dress with a zip down the back, obviously a lot of design, design details, but in quite a minimal way. And that very quickly became my signature. And there was, I always wanted to do more. I wanted to do separates and shoes and handbags. I wanted to do lots of things. But I was really focused, and I did it at a steady pace. Um, and I think that that was very important. And what about other areas of design? Mm -hmm. I mean, what have you got your eyes on? Menswear, perhaps? I'd love to do menswear at some point. Absolutely. And I get very inspired by menswear. Um, not the season I've just shown, but the season before was very inspired by, by men's tailoring. And there was a boy meets girl fashion message throughout the whole collection. So I find it very, very inspiring. I'm sure uh, some people in the room could come up with a muse for you who's not yes. too far from home. Yes, absolutely. He's a bit busy modelling underwear at the moment. But, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. It's, we haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure my pictures would be quite so interesting if he's fully clothed. But. So, so on the subject of that, how important is it to have your family around you yeah. while you're working? Because I know they're here in New York with you while you're showing. Yeah, this is the first season that the boys have actually been to the show because Harper always comes with me because she's not at school like the boys. But I decided I wanted them to come this season because I wanted them to see what mummy does because they sit and they watch daddy play football and it's very, uh, it's very public what David does. And I wanted them to come and see that mummy works as well. And I think that's a very positive message to put out to people that yes, I'm a wife and I'm a mother, but I work as well. And that doesn't come without its challenges. It's difficult, it's very, very difficult. Um, and that's why people like Sheryl Sandberg inspire me so much. It's a juggling act, and David was here as well, and he took care of the boys, and, and he took them out, and just let me get on with my work, which was great, because you do have to be very focused when you're here, showing a collection. It's a lot of late nights, early mornings, a lot of big decisions, a lot of responsibilities. Um, and I'm lucky that I have a husband that supports me and gives me the freedom and the space to do 
what I need to do. But um, it's about being focused, having the right team of people around you, and just structuring your schedule in the right way. You you do bring to mind something. I'm interested in a a day in the life of Victoria Beckham. Mm. And the reason I I mention that is because a few years ago, there was um, someone from the entertainment industry that was a designer. Uh, and they had a pic- their picture taken pinning on a mannequin, mm-hmm. and it, it certainly wasn't you. Um, and it was sort of it mocked quite widely because mm-hmm. it was so clear that that person had been wheeled in for the shot, um, <laughs> but <laughs> which was a little bit tragic. Right. Um, but clearly that's not you. I mean, you've mm-hmm. you've built this. So what's a what's a typical day at your level of the market when you're working on the brand? Do you mean when I'm working professionally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends. If I'm in a development week, which is Um, which is one and a half weeks every month where I am literally focusing on design with all five categories. So I have um, ready to wear, I have the Victoria line, which um, is a slightly less expensive um, collection of dresses. I have denim, I have eyewear, which is sunglasses and also optical, and I have um, handbags as well. So I take all five categories and whether I'm working on a pre-collection or, uh, or a main collection. I spend a week and a half solely focusing on that. And then for the, for the rest of the time, um, I'm in the studio every day. Might be having an e-com meeting or a meeting about lookbooks um, or approving lookbook images or whatever it might be. There's a lot that goes into what I do. It's not just designing. It might be a styling meeting. I might be meeting with the production team with regards to the show and talking about music or laying wood samples out and picking the right wood samples and, and picking the, the, the colour of the wall that I'm going to have for the show. Or to, that There's a hell of a lot that goes into it and I think that's what really surprises people when they step into what, what, what I and my team do is quite how much goes into a production or, or a collection, if you like, or you know, something like that. Well, we, were, we were talking earlier about um, a line plan, mm-hmm. you know, and how one can imagine there are certain designers in Europe that would consider yeah. consi- you know, worrying about the business side of it to be outrageous. It's nothing to do with yeah. them. I mean, there's one of the big yeah. groups actually prides itself on keeping design and commerce very separate. Um, but I think it's more of an American or perhaps international mm-hmm. approach mm-hmm. to actually be aware of the business side of it. Um, tell us a little bit about how you deal with that. I think so. I mean, that's definitely very important to, to, to me and my team. And yes, you ha- it's great to be creative, and we are very creative, but you do have to have a line plan. So when I sit down to design handbag collection, I know what price points I have to hit and what bags I need, and I have the right people around me to help me do that. Um, And there's a lot of creative people that aren't involved with that side of the business. I like to be because I like to be aware, but I think it's very, very important, but very important because if not, how do you sustain a business if you're not doing that? Yeah. We we mentioned also um, uh, the Birkin bag and what a design classic that is. Uh, and how important it is to be inspired by design mm-hmm. classics. And I think people are sometimes afraid of, of looking at quality design mm-hmm. from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're a big fan of the Birkin. I think that everybody's inspired by, um, by Hermes, for sure. I mean, um, I think that you can be inspired by somebody, but you can still do your own thing. I'm not trying to create something like a Birkin bag, but I can look at the, at the quality and the design detail Absolutely, and, and get inspired by that, for sure. What do you do when you dry up of inspiration? What do I do? I mean, you know, I can get inspired from so many, so many things, different people, different places, um, maybe sometimes art. You know, we were talking earlier, and I said my last pre-collection, the colour palette was um, inspired from Julian Schnabel painting, who's my favourite artist. So I think that you can draw inspiration from anywhere, you know, it's great to go to vintage shops and, and look at archives as well and, and get inspired. Yeah, I think it's an important lesson that there's inspiration everywhere. And if you Absolutely. can't see it, it's, it's your fault for not seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody sometimes feels that they've run out of ideas, you know. Mm. Um, but I think it's good to challenge yourself. I also like to look at things that I find challenging and things that I wouldn't wear myself. And I like to look at those pieces and get inspired by that. What was your inspiration for this current collection? How are you feeling about it now? Are you sick of it now? No, you know, I'm, um, I'm really proud of, of the show that we showed yesterday. It has definitely evolved. 
Um, it feels very new, but it also feels very me. A lot more, f a lot more fluidity um, this season. A very long, lean silhouette. Um, lots of new techniques that we have developed um, in our studio in London. So I feel very, very proud. The response has been quite mind-blowing, which, which is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned your atelier a couple of times. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how you find your staff and the kind of skills you have in-house. Yeah. Because here in New York, um, many of our designers send everything to a factory elsewhere to get yeah. it made and then sort mm -hmm. of get it the day before the show. And then others have their ateliers in-house, but it seems to yeah. be a dying breed. It's very encouraging yeah. that you have that. It's very difficult to find good pattern cutters and seamstresses, but I'm very lucky. I have some, some great people in London and and I've recently um, employed a few, a few new people that have come over from Paris, which is very exciting. I want to develop in-house. That's what I want to do. Of course, I have to send, uh, send samples out to factories for, so, I, so I can make the dresses to sell. But I love to develop in-house. And that's a rolling development, something that we don't just do when it's showtime. It's something that we do all season. I think you're right. It's important to have a passion for artisanship. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to actually want to touch the fabric and, yes. and Rape, etc. Yes. And I guess yes. you must work with some real experts. Yeah, I mean, everybody that works with me, and I, I have to say, there's a whole row of people here that work with me. It's quite daunting seeing you all sitting here like this. You know, everybody works really hard, and everybody is very passionate about what they do, and everybody gives 100%, and I'm very lucky to have them all. So what does it take? Apart from giving 100%, what does it take to come and work for Victoria and Beckham? Because you know um, everybody wants to. I mean, I, you know, I mean, obviously, talent, work ethic, um, passion. I want people that are good at what they do and people that are good. Uh, I think working as a team is also very important. I'm not doing this on my own. I can't mention and thank my team enough. It is about being in a team. And you have to be the kind of person that can work with other people. Tell me about some of the things that you might advise our students to do. I honestly, I can't tell you enough to just go out and work for other people and just learn, just yeah. learn. Because I learned so much from working with the other companies that yeah. I did. Um, and that's just, that's priceless. Yeah, I mean, we do, uh, we, we have obviously our students all intern, but there's yeah. never a moment when they can't be doing something that's going to yeah. educate them. Yeah, absolutely. And just work really, really hard. That's the other thing, you've got to be prepared to put in the work. We, um, we had um, uh, Terry Lundgren, who's the head of Macy's, mm -hmm. uh, speaking a little while ago, and he mentioned the phrase, bloom where you're planted, right. which is, sounds very old school, but actually it's very yeah. smart. It means if you're going to make coffee, make it really good. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I always, I think exactly the same. The theatre's brand new. Forgive our teething This trouble. is lovely, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it's it? It's really it's beautiful. Posh. Yeah, it's very posh. <laughs> I thought we weren't meant to have fun. Was I was going to say I was going to sing then. Right. <laughs> Almost. Um, so I actually don't study fashion. I study interior design. And I wonder how you consider space and, you know, as a context for your clothes. And also, do you think you'll ever collaborate with interior designers in the future? Um, I mean, I love interior design. Actually, um, Kelly Hoppen, I don't know if you know her, is a very good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it, you know, I've been very fortunate. When I moved to Los Angeles, I worked very closely with Kelly. She helped me do the interior design for my house. Um, and it's not a million miles apart, away from what we do in fashion about collecting the fabrics, the mood boards, the inspiration, um, and the different elements. So I definitely say that there's, uh, there's a, a synergy between the two. It feels like in fashion, if you have this vision, which you have to have mm. to be successful, you can apply it to a lot of other things. It yeah. seems like much less of a stretch for a fashion designer to do interiors than mm -hmm. an, an automotive designer to do a dress. Absolutely, yeah. Mind you saying that, I did work with Range Rover once. You did? Yes, I remember seeing I did. the review, yes, yes. yes I Top Gear with... liked it, well done. Yes, yes. I mean, that was interesting. And again, that was great for me because I was working in a different industry with different people. Um, and I learned so, so much. Well, there's a creative language, I think, yeah. and you must have had that as a performer, and so there mm -hmm. must have been many aspects of that that you could apply to, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. to being a designer. But that's an example of, you, you know, go out there, work with other people, learn, try different things. The question is, um, you're a very, very talented designer, clearly, but how do you make sure the rest of your business is well handled? And I suspect this is an opportunity for you to compliment the people in the front row. <laughs> yes. 
This is the time for me to compliment the front row, if you like. I have really good people around me looking after the business. Um, it would be impossible to do everything, and I think that that's possibly where people fall down. You know, I know my strengths. I know where I'm not so strong and where I need the help. And I'm not afraid to get the help. And I built my team up gradually. I never went into this saying, my surname is Beckham and I can afford to do whatever I want. I did this like anybody else would do this when starting up a business. I am very aware of all of the costs and always have been, and I've built this in the right way. And you're right, I have a fantastic team of the best professionals in the industry advising me and working with me. And I think what we're creating together is really something very special. I think there's a very key message in there for us as students, which is collaboration. Yes. You know, and that's actually bizarrely why this building exists, to enable yeah. all of our different disciplines, as we saw in the conversation earlier, yeah. to collaborate with each other, because you're nothing on your own. Absolutely, absolutely. There's so many different, um, um, I suppose you need a team of so many people that have knowledge in different areas to make the machine work. And I wasn't aware of that when I first went into the fashion industry, but I'm learning along the way. And I learn from those people, and I'm very lucky to have them around me. I was just wondering if you could comment a little bit more about being a woman in business and if you consider yourself a feminist or what kind of commitments you have to that professional identity. I am a professional, but I'm also a mum and I put my children first. Um, but I think women are still treated very differently to men. I support women who, who have children and work. I think that women should support women. I think there is too many women that that, that, that don't, and I think women should stick together. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Victoria, lovely to have you here. Thank um, you. I just wanted to go back on to the point about your signature look. I feel like, and I lived in London for many years, and I feel like I, I've watched you before you were in this business, and you've done very well to sort of embody your signature look, and I'm just very curious how you really arrived at you know, the, the, the dress with the zipper in the back. How did you arrive at that being the piece that you were going to start out with? Do you know, it's, it's funny um, because I wasn't aware of how important it was to have a signature until I'd created it. I was creating dresses that I wanted to wear. That's why I went, one of the reasons that I decided to design a collection is I couldn't find what I wanted. Um, and they were dresses that I wanted to wear and dresses that I continued to wear. It was a fitted dress with a zip down the back, something that wasn't overly complicated, something that was beautiful quality, beautiful fabric, interesting seeming details, but really quite minimal at the same time. And then I loved the, uh, the dramatic zip down the back. You know, I think that women and men appreciate, appreciate that. It's quite a... <laughs> I it's quite a that. sexy little signature point. You do hit on a very important point, I think, there, which is the mistake people make in thinking that to be successful, you've got to have a marketing team and a social media team mm -hmm. and all those other different people advising you on what you should be doing, mm -hmm. when in fact what you need is a vision. And clearly you had a vision, even if you didn't realize it at the mm -hmm. time, you, you knew you wanted something, and that's yeah. what's given rise to the rest of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now I'm in a position where I do have a team and I do have lots of d d divisions, but I didn't have that at first. And you also have the Victoria Beckham look, so they can all coalesce yeah. around that rather than telling you what it should be. Yeah, absolutely. I had a point of view, and I think that's very important. I think that they're the important shows that we look at every season is the, is the designers that really have a point of view. What is that message? You've always been spotted wearing the best heels, so I just wanted to know if you have ever considered starting your own line of heels or shoes? Do you know I do want to start a shoe collection, and if anybody here is a shoe designer, please do come and see me. Um, <laughs> I definitely think shoes is probably the next category that I will look at going into. I hear that, it's, that, it, that it doesn't come without a with, you know, it's quite a complicated yes, category yes. to go into, but definitely I would love to go into, into that category. I actually um, work with Manola Blahnik on the shoes for my show every season, and working with him is remarkable. It's Absolutely master, remarkable. He? Oh, he really is, yeah. Yeah. So you and shoes, that doesn't seem like such a big leap to me somehow. I don't know what it is. No, it doesn't, but I think it's very complicated. You know, I wouldn't just want a signature shoe. I'd have to make sure that I'm working with the right factories so that I could do, you know, a flat, so that, so that I can do lots of, lots of different things. 
Yeah, it's the um, same thoughtful approach to what you were starting before. Absolutely, and it's just about surrounding myself with the right people and the right team and figuring out which factories I need to work with to give me what I need. Hi, Victoria. Hello. My name is Isabella Bravo. I'm an expiring designer first year, and I just want to know, how would you describe the Victoria Beckham woman? The Victoria Beckham woman, I'd say that she's a strong woman who appreciates luxury, um, quality, and fashion. Um, I'd also say that my dresses, my collections, if you like, they, they, empower. they empower women as well. Yeah, thank you. They do empower women. I see how women feel when they put the dresses on. They feel, they feel strong, they feel confident, and they feel empowered. What were you trying to say? You know, yeah. were you trying to prove yeah. something, or were you just doing what you? I wasn't. I wasn't trying to prove anything to anybody. You know, I created ten dresses that were all very structured, lots of corsetry, great seaming details, um, not that many fabrics. It was a very, very focused collection, and I wanted to design ten dresses that I wanted to wear myself. And I had two girls that I worked with. I had a girl called Melanie who helped me with the design. Um, and I had a girl called Tracy who was doing the production. And it was the three of us. And we came up with these 10 dresses. And that was my point of view. They were dresses that I wanted to wear myself. I liked how the zip looked down the back, you know. Um, I think that this has been a very organic journey, if you like. And a lot of this has happened very naturally, and I think that's one reason why people have responded in the way they have. It feels real, this is very honest. I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm just trying, I'm, I'm just being me. That's a very key point as well, because of course when you started, all eyes were focused on yeah. you, and everyone was waiting for you to try and be something that they would consider yeah. you or not, and you yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you kept it quiet and kept yeah. it small, and I think the organic point is very important. Because yeah. people seem to think that the plan should come before the organic yeah. nature of, of what you yeah. do. It all happened so naturally. Even when I was doing the presentations right at the beginning, you know, and I was talking, you know, this next dress is made <laughs> out of Jackie Tex or whatever it might have been that I was talking about and talking about the seeming details. Then the models would walk towards um, the people that I, was, that I was presenting the collection to. And sometimes I'd open the dress and I'd show um, the corsetry. Um, and it all happened very naturally, though that wasn't staged. There was no script. It happened naturally. I was just enjoying myself. I wasn't trying to prove anything to anyone. I was enjoying talking about the collection that I'd created with my team. I mean, sometimes I'd be talking to people in the room that were buyers that didn't even speak English. But, you know, <laughs> it, it didn't matter. I, 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 I had a passion and people could see that and it all happened very, very naturally. It's such an important point. If you don't have a passion and if you're not actually having fun, then you yeah. really need to think about doing something else. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is, we're in a really incredible industry. We really are. And yes, it's hard work, but we should all be passionate about what we're doing for sure. Yeah. Could be working in a bank, that would be worse. Being a banker, yeah, that would be. We, we used to say being a lawyer would be worse, but actually it's the bankers that are right. really evil Absolutely, now, isn't it? yeah, sure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the MFA here and I think a lot of people get excited about the idea of going out and launching themselves and especially mm -hmm. with your studio in London where there's a lot of support for emerging talent. Um, what do you think is the best idea? Do you think, especially with those types of support, we should be encouraged to do that or go into a company? I think that, you know, to start your own brand, um, I mean, it's very expensive. And I think it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. And of course, at some point, you, you should take that leap if that's what you want to do. But I think not until the time is right and you're armed with, with the necessary information that, that, you, that you need and the tools that you need, which is why I think it's so great to go and work for other people and learn before you do that. But I definitely encourage people to follow their dreams and, and launch their own brand. But I'd say straight from leaving school, you should absolutely go and work for other people. Well, there, there are some fantastic mistakes you can look forward to making, and it's always better to make those with someone else's money, not your own. Absolutely. That's a really, that's a really, really good point. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think also, starting your own brand means lots of different things. It can mean an entire division with a big, splashy show, or it can be 10 dresses yeah. like you did. Yeah, absolutely. And grow it organically. You know, I was, I was very specific when I first started. I said, listen, I might be able, well, I, I would be able to afford to have the best of everything right from the beginning, but it wasn't about that. It was about doing it in, in the right way. Hi, Victoria. Hello. Um, 
I waited 14 years for this. Um, <laughs> it better be good. <laughs> no pressure. You're one of my inspirations for actually becoming a fashion designer from the beginning. Thank you. Um, my question is, what is your advice for students who have just graduated who are ready to start their own business but have no business background? Um, I mean, you know, I feel like I'm saying the same thing, but go, go and work for other people. I think that, um, that that's the best way to learn. That's the only way to learn. That's the way that I learned, for sure. And I was lucky, sorry to interrupt, but I was lucky as well, you know, um, having Simon Fuller as a business partner. I learned a lot from him, and he introduced me to the right people and the people that could work with me and people that I could learn from as well. I think there's a really important message there, and I'm confident that many people are not listening to it. And that is, you need other people. You need to work with other people. Victoria, mm -hmm. you worked with three or four different brands. Yes. You, you basically work for them, designing for them yes. before you went off on your own. And yes. people don't realize that. And it's, it's so vital. Um, so you mentioned a little bit that your kind of interest in fashion got started from admiring your mother when you were younger. I was right. wondering what other influences along the way you had, be it designers, be it film, artists, or the like. You know, I mean, there's been so many people and so many, whether it's music artists or film stars, um, so many it would be it would be hard to start you start really quite an it. impressive next door neighbor well, I guess <gasps> yes I've just <laughs> moved and mr. Valentino lives um, three doors down because we had yeah, we, that's I hope some of you were there when we had him in recently um, actually he had, a, he had a Giancarlo had a very interesting point that I'd love to hear your take on uh, when someone said to him, who's the most important voice in fashion? And everyone thought he'd say Anna or someone like that. And he said, no, the only person that really matters is the woman at the cash register. Yeah. There's nobody else. Yeah, no, Anna does matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she definitely matters. Uh, I think he was probably uh, overreacting there. Um, listen, I, I, what I love to do, and another thing that I think is very important, I work very closely with my retail partners. So I travel all around the world. I've been to... China, I've been to Canada, obviously America and London and, and, and France. Uh, I've been all over the world and I like to go to the stores where I sell my clothes. And these aren't press events. These are, um, these are events where I'm getting in the fitting rooms with the women that are buying my collections. And sometimes I do little trunk shows um, and I get in the fitting rooms and I put the ladies in the clothes. And, and, and that is very, very important. So I know each season what she wants, how she wants to feel, what fabrics she likes, what she desires, what she likes about her body, what she doesn't like about her body. And I love doing that. I love getting to know my customer. So I know what to design in the next collection. And, you know, I have a show collection, which is what you saw yesterday, but then I also have another side of that collection, which is what the buyers will want to buy, as well as the show collection. And that, as well as hopefully what's been in the show, is what the customer wants. That's what she's going to feel good in. Have you had moments where you've seen one of your creations going down the street or at a party or something and had like a little quiet smile to yourself? Oh, God, absolutely. I do that all the time. People say, is it exciting when a celebrity wears one of your dresses, it, it really doesn't matter whether it's a celebrity or whether I'm at a party or, or you know, I'm, I'm in a bar or something and I see someone wearing one of my dresses, the fact that they have chosen to buy something that, that I have designed with my team is very, very exciting and I never want that to go. I never want that to go because mm. that's a big deal, I think. Yeah. Hi, I'm Patricia, Hi. Ella. Um, I love you. <laughs> um, I want to know if there's any like artwork that inspires you and um, music that you listen to since you came, for, you came for music. Is like music a big inspiration to you? You know, um, I, love, I love art. I love Julian Schnabel, Damien Hirst. Um, I, I love contemporary art. So I definitely find that very, very inspiring. Um, with regards to music, I don't feel that music and music videos inspire fashion in the way that maybe they, they did once. I mean, not for me personally. I'm more inspired by, by film and, and movie stars for, for sure. I like music, but I don't find... Uh, it would be hard pushed to think of anybody in music that I find inspiring fashion-wise. I mean, I can look at the likes of Lady Gaga and people like that and think, well, she's, she's great, she's talented, um, she has a point of view, you know, she, she wears crazy clothes and she looks great. 
Um, mm. But not like it used to, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, there was a band from a while back that was quite inspiring to a lot of people. Oh, my God. <laughs> the name's on the tip of my tongue. I can't quite Some remember. of those platform will... trainers, listen, that was nothing to do with me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't wear those. But it is funny how what you used to wear then is actually not a million miles from, from what you do now. But, that, but that's, what I, that's another thing that I think that the, 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 you know, people believe it. You know, they're, it was, they're I mean, not... in some ways, one could say it was true. I mean, it was yeah. like, well, I mean, th your image now, which yeah. is clearly you, it's not a manufactured image. Yeah. It's not a million miles away from how you've looked through your career. Yeah. And I mean, that was a compliment. Well, just a little older. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> a little older. But, but no, I mean, that's, that's right. And I think that that's another reason why my customer can relate to me, is because it does feel very real. Yeah, I mean, because you could imagine one of your friends in the band trying mm -hmm. to do this kind of thing, and it might mm -hmm. not be quite as convincing. I think that, you know, we were all good at different things, and we all had different passions. Yeah. And maybe if I was doing what they're now doing, that might not be so convincing. Either. Right. So, so Victoria, um, I've got one last thing I want to ask you okay. um, before we wrap up, and that is, tell me a secret. A secret? Tell me something about Victoria Beckham. Oh, my goodness. Something that, about Victoria that other Beckham. other people don't know. Um, there's lots of things about me that you don't know. Oh, I'm sure. Goodness tell me. us well, one I'm, of them. Well, I'm not going to give you anything <laughs> too juicy. I mean, goodness, I don't know. What does nobody know about me? What does anybody know about me? I'm a terrible driver. I'm a really terrible driver. <laughs> yeah, David does not let me drive anymore because I'm that bad. Um, anything else about me? No, that's quite a good one. I quite like that's, that. That's quite, that's quite a good one. Yeah, I was at boot camp at 8 o'clock this morning. That's another secret that no one knows about really? me. And also, you yeah. quite like, you'd be a personal trainer if you weren't a fashion designer. Yeah, I was joking. I'm not really fit enough to do that. <laughs> I'd, if I wasn't a designer, when you asked me that question earlier, I was thinking about it, I'd probably like to be a makeup artist. Really? I always loved art at college um, and, and school, so I would, I would like to be a makeup artist, I think, for sure. Very good. Yeah. Well, it's been a real pleasure having thank you here, you. Victoria. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being so open and so candid, and thank you for sparing time after your wonderful collection yesterday. Well, thank you so much, and, and great to And come Victoria's and do always this. looking for people. So I'm sure there's a apply here on her website, um, and if there's not, I'm sure you can put it on there, uh, and that well, would be how you get hold Suzanne. of it. We should have Suzanne. You should go, come and show Suzanne your work. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, right. but really, thank thank you so much, and thank you everybody for being here, and good luck, really good luck. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.